I came here as a law student in the late 1970s. And in 1980, I was a third year law student and I, I got a job working for a law professor named Judge Sweat. Uh, judge Sweat had been obviously a judge. He'd been a state legislator. He was a very colorful gentleman from Alcorn County. He taught ethics, which they uh, taught back then, still teach more of now, uh, I'm told. Uh, he taught ethics of the legal profession. I was his assistant. I had free access to him almost every day, and it was a wonderful job. He was very dapper. He had a bushy head of gray hair and wore bow ties. And Judge Sweat, I guess with a name like Sweat, your nickname has to be Soggy. <laughs> and his entire adult life, he'd been known as Soggy Sweat. We never knew his real name. We didn't call him Soggy, the students did. We called him Judge Sweat, but he was well known as Soggy Sweat, a very colorful career. Soggy, Judge Sweat, loved literature. And we talked about books. He loved the Southern writers, all the great Mississippi writers, and he read them and knew them, and we talked about them. Uh, at this same time, Willie Morris had just returned to Mississippi after about 20 years in New York. He was a writer in residence here, or some such title. He was supposed to teach, but Willie never took to the classroom. Willie's idea of being the writer in residence was to invite all of his old buddies from the New York days to come to Oxford for two or three days to party and have a good time and spend an hour or so talking to students, giving a lecture, and it was just a whole lot of fun. So Judge Sweat and Willie were close friends, and Judge Sweat was always concerned about how big the crowds were gonna be when these great authors came to town to speak. And so we would get extra credit to go listen to these writers. I got additional points for listening to William Styron and James Dickey and Robert Penn Warren and Larry L. King and David Halberstam. And not, obviously, we didn't have this facility, but all of them were on campus. And the, it really created this wonderful literary environment here on campus, and I got to kind of be in the middle of it because of Judge Sweat. Judge Sweat and I were talking one day about writing, and he was a very gifted writer. Um, I asked him if he'd ever pursued that. He said no. Uh, he just, he thought about it. He, in fact, he'd only written really one thing that became very famous. And I asked him what it was, and he said, well, it was a speech that he gave uh, back in the 1950s when he was a young state legislator. And he pulled it out of his uh, drawer and he began to explain what it was. It's called a whiskey speech. And he wrote it back in the 1950s when Mississippi was completely dry. The state was officially dry until the mid-1960s. Um, it was very hypocritical because there was enough booze in the state to float a barge down the river, but we all wouldn't, it was against the law. Uh, not until the 1960s, mid-60s, mid did, did we finally pass a law giving each county the option to go wet or dry. And I think about half the counties are still dry. But back then in the political campaigns, the issue of booze, alcohol, whiskey was, was very, very controversial. And every politician who ran for office knew at some point he would be faced with the issue of whiskey. And it was not unusual to be on the back of a tractor trailer rig in rural Itawamba County and giving a speech and some loud mouth yell out, how do you feel about whiskey? And every politician, you know, would just dread that question. Well, Soggy, Judge Sweat got tired of it. And so he came up with a response which became the whiskey speech. He gave it in 1952 and he read it to me one day. It became very well known. Over the years, a lot of people have claimed authorship, but as the years have gone by, I think the authorship really settled at the desk of Judge Sweat, he now gets credit for it on Wikipedia, which as we know means everything. <laughs> Here's the whiskey speech. My friends, let me put my glasses on. My friends, I had not intended to discuss this controversial subject at this particular time. 
However, I want you to know that I do not shun controversy. On the contrary, I will take my stand on any issue at any time, regardless of how fraught with controversy it might be. You have asked me how I feel about whiskey. All right, here is how I feel about whiskey. If when you say whiskey, you mean the devil's brew, the poison scourge, the bloody monster that defiles innocence, dethrones reason, destroys the home, creates misery and poverty, yea, literally takes the bread from the mouths of little children. If you mean the evil drink that topples the Christian man and woman from the pinnacle of righteous, gracious living into the bottomless pit of degradation and despair and shame and helplessness and hopelessness, then certainly I am against it. But <laughs> if when you say whiskey, you mean the oil of conversation, <laughs> the philosophic wine, the ale that is consumed when good fellows get together that puts a song in their hearts and laughter on their lips and the warm glow of contentment in their eyes, if you mean Christmas cheer, if you mean the stimulating drink that puts the spring in the old gentleman's step on a frosty, crispy morning, if you mean the drink which enables a man to magnify his joy and his happiness and to forget, if only for a little while, life's great tragedies and heartaches and sorrows, if you mean that drink the sale of which pours into our treasuries untold millions of dollars, <laughs> which are used to provide tender care for our crippled little children, <laughs> our blind, our deaf, our dumb, our pitiful and aged and infirm to build highways and hospitals and schools, then certainly I am for it. <laughs> this is my stand. I will not retreat from it. I will not compromise. <laughs> 